I had a pretty good question come up about solving absolute value equations that look like this. So here was the question. Why can't I make both sides negative when I'm solving like this? Why is it that when I'm setting up the, the solving strategy, why do I only make one side negative? And okay, so I thought the best way to approach this program problem was to first think about just how to solve, you know, plain old absolute value equation. So we'll, we'll kind of just quickly go through this. So think about how you solve this. So we split it into to two parts, right? So we have this x plus one equals five and then x plus one equals negative five. And what I really want to point out here is, so you have like the positive side and then the negative side. And if you think about the solutions for this, this actually makes sense. So I want you to remember that this equals five and negative five. I'm, I'm going to kind of bring this all back together in a moment. So we always keep one side positive and one side negative when solving. That's one thing I want you to remember. And so if I want to solve this, I'm going to just go ahead and subtract one from, from each side, right? And so I get these two solutions, x equals four or x equals negative six. So now I want to just take a second to think about why these solutions make sense. So I want to check them. So this is the equation we just solved. Here are the, the two solutions. So here's what's kind of interesting. So first I plug in the four. So, okay, I plug in the four and I get the absolute value of five. So the absolute value of five does equal five, right? So now let's take a look at the, the other solution, negative six. So I plug in, oops, oh, so good to go here. Okay, so now I plug in negative six. So notice what happens. This becomes negative five. We're taking the absolute value of negative five. This is not a coincidence that we got this result, by the way. We know that the absolute value of negative five is five, but if I go back to where I actually set up, like how to solve this. So remember, we broke it into these two parts, five and negative five. The reason I have this is because I know if I take the absolute value of this, it will end up coming back out to five. That's why we're splitting it into the two parts. So, okay, this all checks out kind of get the, the reasoning behind this. And so now I want to pivot to what if this became the absolute value of five X? How does that change the problem? Well, we're going to use the same logic. Okay. So I'm going to break this into five X and then negative five X. So same idea, right? We have the positive side and the negative side. So if I go through and I solve this, so I'll go ahead and I'll subtract, um, let's see, I'll subtract the X's from all sides. So I continue to solve this. So I get four X equals one or, um, negative six X equals one, and then I can finish solving so I can divide. So I get X equals one fourth or X equals negative one six. Okay. So we, we won't check this one. We'll check the next one, but similar reasoning. And so now let me make this problem slightly more complicated again. So now I've got the absolute value of X plus one equals the absolute value of five X minus three. So this is where people's minds can start to kind of play tricks on them. We are still using the same logic. Now, the thing I find is that a lot of people will look at a problem like this and let that minus sign throw them off. Do not let your brain start new rules just because there is a negative. This is a really common thing that happens with mathematics. It's like you, you look at this, you know what absolute value is. And then it's just a, it's just a thing your, your brain kind of does. It thinks, oh, okay. It's uh, now I have to make this into something positive that is creating a new rule and it's not a rule. This does not equal this, this, this is not a thing. Okay. So you can't do this ever. You can't just split this up like this. Now you might be thinking, oh, but I, I know there's something there with absolute value. So absolute value rules apply to multiplication, not addition and subtraction. So if I wanted to break up an absolute value, if I had something like the absolute value of a times B, I could break this up into the absolute value of a times the absolute value of B but you're never going to find this for the absolute value of a plus B or the absolute value of a minus B. Okay. So keep, keep this part kind of straight and, and try to stop your brain. If it starts trying to add a rule here, that's not there. Just try to stop them. Okay. So we're still using the same logic. So when I split this up first, I just drop the absolute value and then I want to make one side negative. So here's what that looks like. So, this is the positive side and this is the negative side. And I made it negative now by putting a negative and this set of parentheses on this whole side. This is how I make the entire side negative. 
And so then, yeah, I'm gonna need to distribute that negative. So when I distribute the negative, now I am left with this expression didn't change. And this side becomes negative 5x plus 3. So just notice here that I have literally the opposite signs of, of the expression, okay? All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to solve this. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 1 from each side. So I get this expression here. So I'm just kind of quickly going through how to solve this. I'll go ahead and I'll add, um, let's see, I'll, I'll subtract 5x from this expression. I'll add the 5x to this expression. So what I'm left with is negative 4x equals negative 4 or 6x equals 2. So if I finish solving this, I get x is 1 or x is 1 third. Okay, so does this actually make sense? The, the easiest way to figure out if this makes sense is just to double check. So if I just want to quickly kind of go through this, so let's check each answer. So starting with 1, so I plug 1 into both sides of the equation, right? So this now becomes 1 plus 1, and then 5 times 1 minus 3, that's what I've plugged in here. And so when I do this, this becomes the absolute value of 2 equals the absolute value of 2. Yep, that checks out, so we're all good there. Okay, so now let's pivot to 1 third. This one will be just a little trickier because it's a fraction. So I plug in 1 third for the x's, and so... To get this side, I need to change this 1 into 3 over 3. That's what, um, that 1 is equivalent to 3 over 3. And then if I multiply these together, I get 5 thirds minus 3. Now what I want to do is I want to convert that 3 into a fraction. So I remember that 3 is equal to 3 over 1. I can multiply the top and bottom here by 3 over 3 because that's the denominator that I want. So this becomes 9 over 3. So now I can just rewrite this expression. Okay, so now what I get is the absolute value of 4 thirds. So I added these pieces together and then 5 thirds minus 9 thirds. So if I do this calculation here, I get the absolute value of 4 thirds equals the absolute value of negative 4 thirds. And we haven't taken the absolute value yet. So when I take the absolute value, I get 4 thirds equals 4 thirds. So we're all good. Okay. So these solutions are right, right? They definitely work. They're two unique solutions. We are all good. Now, I think there are still some related questions about this. So what happens if you make both sides negative? And also what can you make the other side of this type of equation negative? Why does it always have to be the right side? Okay, so let's let's start with that first question. What if I make both sides negative? So what I wanna do is I wanna set this up like this and then the other side like this. So this is the only way that you can make both sides negative. You have to put those parentheses around. This equation here, by making both of these negatives, this is literally the exact same equation now as this one, right? Because what I could do, I could divide each side of this equation by negative one and I would cancel out these negatives and then I would just be back to the original equation. So I don't end up with two unique equations if I tried this setup. It doesn't give me that, that thing. So this will not re result in two unique answers. You would just get the same answer, okay? So that's not gonna work. What if instead I wanted to do it like this? I wanted to call this x plus 1, so oh, the same side, but then for the negative side, I just put the negative in front of the 5x, and then I didn't worry about this negative 3. Now this looks like two different equations, but if I just put a negative here, this does not follow that logic. Remember, we want to make the entire side negative, and to make an entire equation side negative, you have to include parentheses. So this actually violates our logic for solving those problem types. So this will not work. It would give you a unique answer, but it would also give you the wrong answer. So you need to make one entire side negative when you do this. This does not make the entire side negative. If I make the, this side negative, what happens is I flip all my signs. I get all opposite signs. Okay, so that kind of, I think resolves why can't you just make both sides negative. Now let's think about the other question. What if I wanted to make the other side negative? So I, I don't want to make the right side always negative. Okay, so what I could do then is I could set it up like this. So notice, so I've got the first equation, I always just kind of drop the absolute value with that, right? But now notice I've put a negative and this set of parentheses on this side. This is okay. At the end of the day, you just have to make one side negative. And so if I decide I'd, I just, you know, want to die on the hill of making this side negative, that, that's okay. Um, and so ultimately, you yeah, you just need to make one side negative. That, that's what you have to remember. And so if I wanted to work this out just to prove it to you, so I'm going to really quickly go through this. You can pause the video if you want to work this out on your own. 
So I go through and, and here's kind of all the work and, and I keep going through all this. So I end up getting the same answers. So this is totally fine. This tells me this was fine to make this other side negative. No problem. We know that those are the answers. Now, as far as like, which side do you choose then? I like to keep things consistent and always do the same side, but you do you. So if you want to flip flop which side you're doing and that's not going to confuse you, you, you can do that. And okay, so I think that resolves every question that I had with this particular concept. Keep them coming guys, thanks for watching.